Hey guys, welcome to game number four of this nine game series of the Korea China Invitational League match number four. We have Fengji, our Chinese Serg, up here in the top right. In the bottom right, we have Bishop. So far, Bishop is up three to oh. Uh, we've had some pretty good games overall. Bishop is playing really some fantastic, super solid Terran. Uh, he's, he's looking absolutely amazing. Hopefully, Fengji can start to come back. It hasn't been as one-sided as 3-0 might lead you to believe. So if you're just tuning in now, you might want to especially check out game number one. Fantastic, fantastic game. Uh, but definitely, it's time for Fengji to strike back if he's going to pick up a victory. Uh, we're on Fighting Spirit, which is a very old map. We'll talk more about that in a moment as that Overlord reveals some more of the terrain. But yeah, guys, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I do hope that uh, you guys subscribe to the channel. And thank you to everyone who has signed up on the Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash artosis. Uh, really appreciate you guys, and uh, you can check that out if you'd like. The link is below in the description. Now, this is the oldest map that's still played. Okay, Fighting Spirit is incredibly old. Uh, it's no longer good. It's not a modern map. It's not shaped in ways that are fair. Uh, like, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you this as someone who, uh, <laughs> commentates, uh, in an unbiased and professional way, right? Like this is, the map is, is very, very bad at this point. The spawns are like super imbalanced. There's actually a great video where I, I think it was Larva went over his finals against Mini. And literally he made a choice based on his spawn and the odds of where Mini's spawn was as to what mini would do because the spawns are some of the spawns are so bad uh it, just to explain exactly what i'm talking about here right so basically game seven of asl finals was fighting spirit and larva was top left mini was bottom left bottom left is the worst spawn and in fact it's so bad that mini just went two gates in the center and so larva like talked about that basically how that was a big part of his de decision making process that he had one of the good spawns, so Mini was more likely to do something like that. And so he he simply won the game and the, the title. So yeah, it, it's it, this is a true thing, right? It's kind of a crazy map. It's an old map. Uh, and nothing really fits. Now, that being said, the bottom right spawn is not too, too bad. Okay, there's definitely like a little bit of room for missile turrets over here. It's not as bad as a lot of the other ones. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Fengji right now is going into a very quick layer, as you're about to see. A 253 layer, very, very fast. Uh, down here, it is a quick wall in with the factory. And that's a, quite a quick factory as well. We might be seeing two port once again here from Bishop. Yeah, he pulls two SCVs quite quickly. And bam, there they go to starport wraith once again so this is actually this is exciting like the first game that we had uh was a two port wraith opener from bishop and actually turned into like such a fascinating cool game we'll see if fengji has learned anything from that honestly i think he played really well against it like his spore colonies were up at a very good time he took very little harassment damage at the beginning but was unable to stop the actual army that bishop built later on so Right now, Vulture being made, going to be sent out. There is already a Sunken that's on the way, so that'll be up before the Vulture gets there, just in time, very well timed out. And of course, the two Wraiths are going to start, and that's going to be something that is on Fengji's mind, but he hasn't been able to scout it as of yet. So we'll see if he goes once again for that Evolution Chamber play. He did get two Spores up in time, where he didn't really take much damage. Right, He lost like one drone to two drones, and maybe like a couple overlords to the initial wraiths. And normally it's more than that. So uh, it was very cool stuff before. There's that evolution chamber. So yeah, he is going for it. He'll have to throw down those creep colonies very, very soon. There's one. And we'll see the other one. Will he put it right in the center? Maybe down a little? Yeah, that looks better. That looks better. There is maybe a possibility of sitting wraiths like there, but then they're very committed far in your base and things like Scourge can pop out to punish. So something like this that zones a bit better on this side is generally going to be considered better. All right, so the first two wraiths are making their way up. Let's see what Bishop gets done with these. All right, flies right into the natural, going after an overlord to start. 
Don't want you guys getting motion sickness there. And ends up killing an Overlord, but look at the amount of damage he already took. 90 on that one and a good 45 on that one. So those have to go home and get healed up a little bit. You do not want to be losing rates early on, but if you're literally killing one Overlord only, that's pretty bad. Like that is not the opening that you want with these wraiths. But that being said, uh, one thing I want to mention is that at the Korean pro scene, basically no one goes Spore against this. For whatever reason, they've decided that Spore is not a good answer. Um, you know, it, the thing is, the spores are spores are expensive, right? So this costs 125 minerals total, and of course a drone. And this costs uh, 175 minerals total, and a drone, one of which is a drone, right? So that's a lot of money, right? So there's like 350, you know, plus the 125, 475 minerals for two spores. It's it's a hell of a lot of money. And so like at that point, maybe it's okay to lose a few extra units and just replace your economy. You know, it's hard to say. Uh, you got to really look at a lot of the different costs that, that are going into things. But uh, it is true that the Korean pros almost never go spore against this. Now... We're going to see if Fengji is able to do something because of this. He, uh, Bishop is altering his course of play. Before he went into three barracks, Marine Medic. Here, he's going Command Center right away. And I believe that this is a response to the Spores. I think he thought about it some from the previous game. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Uh, I think he thought about it some from the previous game that they played like this. And then was uh, like, you know what? We, we can just take the expansion. I don't really need to worry. He can't attack me early. It's nothing like Hydra's. Some great micro going out, by the way. Oh my god, the amount of damage is insane. It is insane. Now, a Queen's Nest came up very quickly. I believe that's going to be for Ensnare. That's my best bet. Ensnare, we have seen against these Wraith builds lately. Uh, so, not a big surprise to see him maybe trying that, but Fengxi is taking way too much damage from these Wraiths, honestly. The Wraiths are getting a huge amount done. Oh, man. It's really painful the amount of damage he's taken thus far. The plus one carapace is still coming. He is going to be able to pick off this one Wraith, but that's a lot of damage to the Mutas. Oh, my God. This is insane. Just the amount of damage output. Like, Bishop is not missing many shots at all. He's firing almost exactly when the cooldown comes off, which is like, damn, your micro is looking fantastic right now. He's up 10 workers, has his natural expansion up, continues to snipe drones. This one spore not doing a good enough job here. Absolutely not. So maybe we're starting to see some of the reasons why the pros don't like the spore against this. Like you'd need another spore here, right? To really, really defend that. Now, the uh, wraiths are killing even more mutas. This is, dude, this is really bad. This is really bad. Bishop getting to, yeah, such a lead, GG. All right, so we're jumping directly into the next game. This is game number five on Vermeer. And just pretty standard openers, just a barracks into an expansion coming up from Bishop. Scouting out with this SCV over on Fengji's side. It is a hatchery first. No Zergling Rush or anything like that. But... He might need to switch it up a little bit. I'm not sure. Like, are you supposed to go super aggro in the early game or something as Fengji? He's tried a few different things. Uh, definitely the Wraith build from Bishop so far has been a killer. Uh, the fact that Bishop got two wins off of that and the second one super, super fast while expanding. Definitely, I think Fengji has to think twice about going Spore. If that comes up again, of course, we can see it will not be coming up this game at least. Drone getting over here, and he's going to be able to get shot by a Marine and know, okay, this is where you're at. Definitely looks like you want to expand. Bishop chasing this drone out. The drone didn't get to check if there's a gas. Wow, that's really good micro. Like, only Pro Terrans can basically do this with their SCVs. And it's a very rare thing. A very rare thing. That's, that's demoralizing, though. That's demoralizing. Like, Pro Zergs never really lose a drone like that. So... Uh, a bit painful here for Fengji in the start to lose the scouting drone. Not a mistake you want to make at this level. Layer is coming up. Uh, nice fast layer. Two hatch timing. Feelings being made as well. 
Uh, you know, one of the problems here is, like I was mentioning before when we kind of watched that drone sequence, um, the drone didn't get to get in to see if there was a gas. So, theoretically, Bishop could have been faking an expansion with his SCV down here and instead could be going factory. I think what we'll see is Fengji playing as if it's a just a regular marine expansion. Because if he just blindly makes a sunken right now, like, you can't just be defending thinking, well, I could be being tricked here, right? Like, he's he's lost four games. So you got to do something else. You got to mix this up a little bit. Uh, by the way, speed got canceled for Fengji. Instead, he goes for a third hatchery in that main base. That's actually, like, a pretty normal thing. Like, it's okay for him to start speed, and then maybe if he's afraid that he's going to be under attack, he can let it finish. But if you're going to go three hatches in main, generally better to skip out... Uh, you know, on those on that Zergling speed, get the additional Mutalisk a little bit earlier. And you, of course, can get the Zergling speed later on as well. Uh, and, in fact, even just getting this hatchery quicker, and you could start Zergling speed afterwards if you still really wanted it. But you don't need Zergling speed as much with a build order like this. In fact, it's not really that powerful because you're not going for something aggressive. This is more of a mid-range build from Feng, uh, Fengji. All right, so the bunker doesn't actually get finished. So that's, that's Bishop giving a nod towards the fact that we could see some sort of rush and in fact you can see running around with this scv now he you know he realizes okay there's there's no zergling speed i don't really need a bunker and when zergling speed finishes like he if it did finish he could decide to finish it looks like he decides to just cancel out which is not a bad play here at all uh like bishop is really optimizing his build very very well while still trying to tread that line of being careful as well All right, well, four barracks coming up. It's a four barracks plus one opener here from Bishop. And that's going to be a solid build against what Fengji is doing here. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to create enough Marines and Medics to really put pressure on a player that has their third hatch in their main base. But the thing is, Fengji's build, you're actually able to field a bit more units. Uh, you can see he starts off immediately with seven mutas, right? This is something we were kind of talking about before. Uh... It, the seven mute is, of course, a very important number. And if you have just two hatches, you literally can't get seven because you only can have six larvae at once. So very nice to see him popping that many out so he can start killing some SCVs right away if uh, the opportunity presents itself. Multiple missile turrets going down for Bishop just about all over the place. Range and plus one are coming along, which, of course, that will be the move out timing for uh, Bishop is when he has his plus one finishing uh, as well as the range. That's when you're going to have 20 plus Marines, four plus medics, and you're going to be able to move out because you have kind of like the critical mass that you need where Fengji would have to spend every mineral he has on units to crush your army. It is possible though. It is possible. Now, in come the Mutalists. They fly over the turrets and get a couple kills. They go in the main. They're going to see that it is four racks. Killing a few more SCVs. Oh, man. He loses one, so he's unable to do the one volley. See the difference that makes? <laughs> he had two of them uh, that got down to one shot left, and that's because he lost a single Muta flying through. Really, six Mutas is so much weaker than seven. It's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, third base going down here for Fengji. This is a very quick Lurker upgrade. So that's kind of nice to see out of Fengji. Like, maybe he's able to get his Lurkers up in time that this 4x pressure is unable to really do anything to him. I think that's uh, that's the goal. Get a few Lurkers up on the ramp over at the third base. Get some over at your natural as well. Some more Mutas coming out. The Hydra's going across. Uh-oh, this is not good news. Notice that plus one attack has finished on these Marines. They have the range as well. And if you look at the overall count, it looks like we have like exact 18 to 20, 19, something like that. So it's like exactly what I was kind of talking about before, right? This is this is where you're starting to hit that critical mass or it's very hard for Zerg to deal with it right at this time. Now, he's going directly for this hatchery. The Hydra's sneaking around towards this top right. So it looks like he's just going to re-expand and just let this hatchery die. There's nothing you can really do. He can't engage this right now. Bishop basically nailed his build order, got everything out that he wanted right away. 
Very well done. Very well done. I do have to say, like, Fengji is a very good player. Uh, I've actually casted him beating professional gamers multiple times on the channel. If you want to type in his ID, you can see some of his other games. But here today, Bishop is really dominating. Like, again, we have had some close games, but Bishop is so clean. And obviously, Bishop is someone who's been in ASL before. Uh, he's an extremely strong Terran. He's one of those strong up-and-coming guys that you're like, okay, in the next couple years, he'll probably be in every ASL. You know, like we have this this whole group of players, you know, Scan and Bishop and So-So and, and several others where it's like they aren't in every single ASL yet, but you you have the feeling they're going to become regulars soon, like a Barracks, right? Barracks may be one step ahead of that. Now, the Mutas come in for harassment. They are eliminating a little bit here, but, oh God, it doesn't feel like they're doing enough. In the meantime, a counterattack coming across. The Lurkers are not burrowed. There is an opportunity to strike here. He might attack anyways. It's only two Lurkers. Uh, he doesn't have that plus one armor yet, but just plows through them in a matter of seconds. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be it. This is a big lead for Bishop Fengji having a terribly hard time, especially these last couple games. GG.